Hi everybody and welcome, you're watching Real Estate with Rusty and today we have a special guest, we have Mike D'Ambrosio. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Mike is the general manager of the development department of Intero Real Estate Services and has quite a bit of experience not only on the development side of real estate but also on the investment side in terms of rental properties and uh, one, two, three, four unit properties mm -hmm. as well. Um, We'd like to start with today, as, as usual, I'd like to give a little art market update as to what's going on and I'm sure that Mike can uh, offer some insight into that as well. I would say that um, you know, similar to last week, we went a little bit in depth more so, um, but we really are still in a very hot real estate market here in the Bay Area and specifically in the Silicon Valley. Um, I would say that it's cooled off a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it, it is cooled off a little bit, but it's still very, very hot, right, Mike? Yeah, it is. And I think especially we were talking about off air the last month or so, it feels like graduations used to be just like one week of the year and now it's, it feels like it's spread out to like almost a month. Right. Schools have different graduations here and there and so a lot of people off doing different things which I think has had an impact on the market right. in the start of summer but we're getting back into getting back to some normalcy so. Yeah you know and this kind of does happen every year like you said with the graduations just kind of kicking off summertime people yeah. go on vacation. Memorial Day weekend yeah. that type of thing. Yeah. yeah, so it's just one of those situations where, you know, we, we kind of see this every year. Um, and uh, it's, it's not untrue, though, that the inventory in Santa Clara County specifically has gone up. It's about 1,400 units right mm -hmm. now for sale. That means from Santa, or the whole county, from Gilroy to Palo Alto, yeah. there's about 1,400 homes for sale. And that includes uh, probably about um, 2 million people that live here, right, yeah. in the same county. So yeah. that's actually still a very low number. <laughs> it is. I mean, what I was taught early on is we need about 3,000 plus to be what's considered a normal market. Yeah, so in we're the still area. seeing a hot market yeah. in that case. Yeah. And, you know, my experience with selling homes the last uh, two months and, and the previous months before that is that the product that is really, really nice and priced really, really well is still Going, selling yeah. with multiple offers yeah. and for, you know, over asking price and all yeah. of the same things that you would see as symptoms of a really hot market. Yeah. Um, some of the, the lesser products are, are actually sitting on the market a yeah. little bit longer, but even those are still selling for great prices. So They are. I mean, we are seeing some, even seeing some price reductions and mm -hmm. some longer days on market, but still it's, I always say, you know, I started in uh, real estate in 08 mm -hmm. and I made the genius decision to get in <laughs> in 2008 in Sacramento, which was like the hardest, one of the hardest hit markets in the entire country. Right in the worst year of real estate, one of the worst years. So Almost to go in from, history. Yeah, in the history. So to go from that to where we are now, it, it, I'm very, for, we're fortunate yeah. to be doing what we're doing here. And frankly, people that own real estate are very fortunate yeah. to be doing what, you know, having what they yeah, have here. I, I made a, a comment not long ago, a um, couple of days ago, and I, and I mentioned that, you know, in other areas uh, around the country, to have an average of nine or 10 days on the market as your, yeah, as your yeah. average days on market. Yeah. You know, they'd kill for that kind of a they statistic. And, and we're complaining about it because it used to be seven. Exactly, you know, yeah, so, exactly. And then um, the other thing is like, even during the winter time, we're out showing properties at 70 degrees out yeah. in November, December. Meanwhile, back east, some people can't even show property for two months because they're snowed in or something yeah. like that. Unless so we're very, shovel. yeah, we're very fortunate uh, in the Silicon Valley here, so. So that kind of concludes our little uh, market update. I think uh, we'd like to kind of you know, pick your brain a little bit about real estate development, you mm -hmm. know, kind of give our viewers a little bit of an idea as to what, what does the term real estate development actually mean? Um, and then specifically, you know, what are the pros, not pros and cons, but more, you know, what, what does it entail and what is it yeah. all about? So one of my specialties is helping clients that have land or have, for example, a, a rundown house on a big lot or, or have land near transportation analyze what's going to be the highest and best use of mm -hmm. that property. So what can they get on there? Can they get multi units? Can they get multiple houses? Can they get um, even a mixed use project, depending on where it is uh, commercial, you know, mm -hmm. so really analyzing what the zoning is, what can they do there and what can they build? Mm -hmm. That's what one of my specialties is. And um, so really, really with development in Silicon Valley, 
it's going to be a lot of infill development now because mm -hmm. we can't grow any more land, right. as you know, and, and I'm sure people watching know. So we have to really become creative and get the highest and best use of our properties. And that's the way that if I'm looking at the city of San Jose, especially, that's the capital of Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. essentially, as they like to call themselves. Um, their general plan really calls for urban villages, mm -hmm. high density projects, transit oriented projects. So anything near light rail, we have BART coming in. So a lot of that's gonna be centered around that. They're really trying to uh, go away from urban sprawl, which is building these huge projects out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's- Well, because there the, is no middle of nowhere anymore. Well, that's true. Yeah. That's true, but it also puts a strain on public services sure. and all that. So now they're trying to get it back into near transportation. So. And kind of going back to, we, we talked about how 1,400 units for sale right now is a, yeah. little, bit of a, a, a little bit of a jump from the six or 700 it was three months ago. Um, but still, it's a very low number given how many people live here. I think I've mentioned yeah. on the show before, Total units of total housing units in this county is 660,000. Right. And there's yeah. 1,400 for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. At the beginning of the year, there was 300 for sale, which right. is less it than a fiftieth of a yeah. percent. Of, it was scary. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was. And, but in any event, really, the, the, the fact of the matter is that there's not enough homes for the number of people that want to live here in this area uh, yeah. and, and that already even currently live here. There's not enough yeah. homes. And, and, there's really not a lot of incentive for people to sell their homes given tax you know, um, consequences and right. so forth. And so creating new inventory via building is yeah. really the next step and that's really you know, how we can help solve this. So, um, and, and in addition to that, mm -hmm. you talked about a lot of development, the transit coming in here mm -hmm. um, with the BART coming in and then, and then being closer, building closer in towards the light rail, et cetera. Yeah. Um, this also dovetails into, um, you know, what this area really needs. We've had this big tech boom. It's, this, it's not the first tech boom that we've had here, actually. Yeah, it's right? not. Yeah. It's compounded. Um, and, and as a result, I think development is, is really what's going to drive us into the future and allow for there to be a lot more of a comfortable uh, situation for most people that live here. Yeah, I think so. And, and right now, like I like to focus on San Jose a lot because, again, that's the capital of the Silicon Valley. And so, you know, a lot of people, the buzz is about Google sure. coming into downtown and we've, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about that. And I mean, it's a ways off, but that's just one example of how much more this area is going to grow. I mean, we're not, we haven't even seen the, the peak of it yet as far right. as from a growth and people moving into the area, jobs. I mean, jobs are really what drives a lot of the housing industry and why it's so Certainly, strong yeah. around here. Uh, so, and then, so you focus on downtown San Jose, there's a lot of high rise projects that are approved, but still haven't gone up yet. And we need more housing. And, and so most of the housing that's going to be coming in to the area and getting approved is going to be high density mixed use projects. Okay. Um, a lot of where you see more single family townhouse style projects is like in South County. Mm -hmm. We have Gilroy and Hollister. Those areas have a lot of single family residential and their, their whole motto is drive a little, save a lot. Yeah. And I would say you're driving a, a lot, <laughs> <laughs> not just a little, but you're driving a lot. It's not that close, but you, you know, for people that telecommute and whatnot, it's mm -hmm. a good op It's a good option. Sure. Um, so the further out you get from the hub of Silicon Valley, the more less dense it's going to be. And obviously the further in you go is going to be more dense. Sure. So um, while we're talking about a bunch of these things, I definitely know that we're throwing out some terms that maybe we might want to um, sort of explain what they mean just yeah. really quickly. So just to start with like the, the big scope of things, development, um, and, and, and I want, also want to bring this in sort of to where the viewers can actually understand how maybe they could be involved in something like this or how they could invest in something like this. Um, obviously, um, the average person is not going to invest in a high-rise building. Yeah, However, of there's opportunities for development that the, that the average person actually could be involved with. Um, and so just to sort of uh, you know, define the term development, yeah. you know, typically what that means is that a piece of real estate is being um, either subdivided, meaning that's that one larger piece of real estate is going to be divided into multiple mm -hmm. parcels, uh, whether that be apartments or maybe one big lot's being split into three for three single yeah. family homes. That's one type of development. And then zoning changing is, is another type of development. Yep. Um, and then a, a mix of those two things, mm -hmm. right? Uh, 
and then you know you mentioned the the terms mixed use or high density. High density meaning you know set m multiple units on one smaller piece of land. Yeah. Uh, mixed use meaning both commercial and residential property together. Um, so kind of going back to all that, you know, one of the things I wanted to ask you is just um, in your experience uh, with with development deals, um, what you know, what is the way that an average person could maybe become involved in a development deal, or, yeah. or what could they look for if they were trying to be involved in that? Yeah, and I think, and thanks for explaining those a little bit more. But I, I think, uh, like a simple example, I worked on a deal last year. Uh, my family did. We had a rundown house on a big. It was a rental, so a lot of people out there might have rentals mm -hmm. um, or own a house on a big lot. And so we had, a, we had an older home on a big lot and our neighbor next door, it was a rental as well. They had an older home on a big lot. We joined forces with them. They happened to be a developer builder anyways, mm -hmm. thankfully. And so we got together, we combined the lots and we took these two rundown houses and we built seven attached single family homes mm -hmm. in Sunnyvale, which as a lot of people know, is a very hot yeah. city for tech and for living. And it worked out and that's, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that might have a home on a, on a good sized lot or a rental that they might be able to do something like that. And maybe not seven homes, maybe they can build two or three, yeah. like you said, a lot split yeah. or something. So I think that's, that's one way to go about it is if you already have property or, or rental property. The other way I like is if you're out there, like a, one of the things I've been talking to my tech clients is a lot of them have money tied up in stocks mm -hmm. and almost all of their yeah. wealth tied up in stock, which in my opinion is not the, that's not the best way to go about in, in having your wealth in just in one thing, sure. right? So diversification is very important. And so maybe you can't on your own afford to do a development project, but maybe you and three of your engineer buddies yeah. can pool some money together, cash out some of your, your stock options or something like that, create an LLC, put some money together and then go out and try to find projects. Mm -hmm. So that's another way I think, or it doesn't have to be people in tech. It could be just regular yeah. people in other industries that have yeah. friends that have money or, or whatnot. So I, I think partnerships is another way when you ask, how can you get into development is another way to do it. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that you mentioned that. So, uh, you know, I think the, the thing that people don't realize here is that, you know, in the Silicon Valley, um, you can, in, in the greater Bay Area really in general, is you, could, you can find other people with money, um, and, and even if you don't have any, you can find people with yeah, money. If you yeah. have the ambition and it's, you have the it's drive. floating around, yeah. You know, there's the, actually the capital, at least at this point in time right now, is not the problem. Yeah. The problem it's is finding, finding the property. Finding the property, finding yeah. the deals. Yeah, yeah. and so, um, you know, focusing kind of a little bit on that, you know, what, is, what does one do? Like, for example, you know, I personally have a program where, where I go out and look for, it's not really development, but it's kind of follows the same lines is, you know, there's, there's properties in cities like Campbell, in mm -hmm. cities like Sunnyvale, like you mentioned, uh, cities like um, San Jose, Willow Glen area, um, yeah. and, and things like that, where they have lots that are eight, nine, 10, 15,000 square foot uh, with two bedroom and three bedroom, one bathroom homes right. on them yeah. um, that have just been that way since, you know, they Forever. were built 50, 60, 70 years ago. Yeah. Um, and what I found is that those are perfect opportunities for somebody to, to use a term that you said, really create a better, a better uh, highest and best use for that property, yeah. which mm -hmm. in those cases a lot of times is to have a three or 3,500 square foot home built on them that's now gonna be worth three and a half million dollars. Correct, yeah. And um, given that fact, you know, that's one way to find an opportunity like mm -hmm. this, right, is to research title and find find yeah. properties like that. Are there other things that you're doing or that you can think of that you can share? Yeah, that's a good, I mean, so that's a good way. Uh, the other thing I do is just literally as I'm driving around mm -hmm. and I see buildings that are run down shopping centers on yeah. big lots or, you know, just a run down building or something in an area of where I see development moving, mm -hmm. I just look those properties up and call. And you know, us in real estate, we have access to those programs where we can get phone numbers and all mm -hmm. of that. Um, so that's another way. It's literally just driving around yeah. the, the drive-by. Yeah, the drive not the drive-by you're thinking of, but the drive-by, right? <laughs> and, uh, you know, a perfect example, again, underutilized land. So perfect. if a lot of people watching have never, don't know what was on Santana Row before it was Santana Row, which is Santana Row is, if you look up like the dictionary of urban villages mm -hmm. and successful urban villages, yeah. that's like one of the top ones in the country is mm -hmm. Santana. A lot of people don't realize how 
highly looked upon Santana Row is across the country from developers. And what was on there before was the old town and country, which was this rundown, single level, little shopping center that utilized barely any of the land, mm -hmm. not a lot of the land. And, uh, and now look what it is today. It's mm -hmm. a monster. And, it's con and development's continuing to go into Santana Row, even right. more dense. Um, anyways, I got off on a tangent, but my point is like the drive around, that's, those are the type of things that people did with Santana Row. You know, mm -hmm. they saw a town and country, they saw an opportunity and they called on them. So that's the more old school method I use is just driving by. And then, like you said, you can research records as well. Those two, okay. essentially. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll be back after a break. How do you advertise your business? Are you relying on signs and flyers or using an online campaign? Did you know that TV ads and commercials are the most proven method of promoting or attracting new customers to your business? Whether it's a sole proprietorship, a family business, or a corporation, marketing your business with A and B is the best return on your advertising dollar. So the question really isn't whether you should advertise your business with A and B. Rather, it's why you wouldn't. Contact us to find out the various commercial packages we have to offer. When it comes to selling a home, most homeowners want to know they're working with the best realtor to maximize their sales price. If receiving the highest possible price for your largest investment is the goal, then hiring the right agent matters. Hi, I'm Rusty Pop with Intero Real Estate Services and I'm really excited to have the honor of presenting this property. Rusty Pop of Intero Real Estate Services provides superior knowledge of real estate market trends as an extremely active agent in San Jose and the Silicon Valley with a track record of selling throughout the Bay Area. Specializing in three keys to getting the top dollar, preparation, presentation, and promotion, Pop Properties has a custom marketing plan for you. Rusty and his team offer a concierge service to get your house on the market and looking its best. We take care of all the details to make sure your home shines to attract the maximum number of buyers, and combined with our worldwide global marketing strategy, we ensure the maximum competition for your home. When buyers compete, sellers win. Specific services offered include a concierge coordination of repairs, cleaning, storage, high-end and extensive marketing, and professional custom staging designed specifically for your home. We can even coordinate a full remodel of your house for you. Staging, high-end, state-of-the-art photography, a lifestyle video, and global marketing all come free when you list your home with Rusty Pop. If you're looking to list your home or simply want to discuss its value in today's market, don't hesitate to call 650-793-9575. Welcome back. So, Mike, uh, wanted to kind of switch gears a little bit. We've been talking about development and I know that another you know, part of your business and, and your expertise is in regards to investment properties, mm -hmm. multi-unit specifically. Uh, multi-unit is generally, um, I would say, is you know, anywhere from two to four units as far as residential goes. And then Correct. obviously yeah. commercial residential is five units plus. Exactly. Um, and this is really interesting to me you know, as, a, as a real estate agent that, that helps a lot of homeowners buy and sell homes. Um, because I find that a lot of them rent out their properties that mm -hmm. are either single family residences or condos. Um, and I feel like the return on investment of that type of a, of a rental property is not the greatest yeah, in, in agreed. this area. Yeah. The differential between the, the value of that property and the actual rent that it can bring in, in comparison to some other ways that you could use the same capital mm -hmm. seems kind of um, like a low ROI. Yeah, and it's pretty simple. It's multi, you know, with multi-unit means you have multi multiple income streams mm -hmm. and not just one. So that's why I highly, you know, multi-unit from an investment standpoint is, in my opinion, one of the better investments you can make. And, uh, and I always suggest too, even with uh, first time home buyers, if they can find a good, like a good duplex mm -hmm. or a single family home with a granny unit on it or mm -hmm. an accessory dwelling unit, that's a really good way to start off your real estate career, I guess you <laughs> yeah. call it, because then you're having someone subsidize your mortgage for you, and there's nothing better than that. Right. You know? yeah. So I think multi-unit, you're getting multiple income streams, and that's what's that's what's great about it. Yeah. So um, just talking a little bit about the numbers, like for example, you know, I've I've run across clients that own, uh, let's say they own a condo in Cupertino. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and it's worth a million and a quarter. I'm sure it would be. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is a crazy amount of money for for yeah. a condo, but 
they're, they're, they have an asset that maybe they've owned for 20 or 30 years and actually have paid the mortgage down to almost nothing. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they have a million dollars in, in equity in this property and it rents for $3,000 a month. Yeah. And then at, of that 3,000, they pay a homeowner's association fee. Right. They have to fix it when, it's, when the heater breaks or the air conditioner breaks um, and pay insurance on it and property taxes. So their real re investment return is you know, maybe a $2,000 a month yeah. out of a million dollar investment, right? So what could somebody take that million dollars that they could pull out of that property yeah. and, and do um, locally? What could they do with that? Yeah, I think it, it's, a, it's good, simple numbers. I mean, if they got a million dollars, they, they could find you know, a fourplex, let's say in South County, like Gilroy or something. You're probably not gonna find a decent fourplex in Campbell or in San Jose. Uh, you might, but just you could find a fourplex locally and, and just the simple numbers are if they're getting three grand for that condo, you got a fourplex in a de decent area, you're gonna be getting 1,500 to 1,750 maybe a unit. Mm -hmm. So look at, what that, well, look at what happens to the income at that point. Yeah. You know, it basically triples, yep. essentially. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the, the benefit of owning something that has multiple units. So yeah. for that example, uh, locally. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, and I'll just go into it, if you, uh, is, is out of state, you know, so really here, you're buying multi-unit for mainly, you know, for, yeah, for cash flow a little bit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then for appreciation. Sure. You're really banking on appreciation. Out of state is purely a cash flow, depending on the area you're going, is really a purely cash flow right. perspective um, because the barrier to entry is lower. And what I mean by that is the purchase price mm -hmm. and the rents are going to be similar. So, so breaking that down, for example, if you bought a house here in Willow Glen for a million dollars, you're not going to get, or let me take that back. If you buy a house for 800 grand, you're not going to get eight grand a month in rent. Right. If you buy a house in Texas for $150,000, you're going to be getting about 100 or 1500 bucks in rent. Right. So the ratio is a lot different here than there. Um, so it's really a cash flow play out of state and really more of an appreciation and somewhat cash flow yeah, play here. And I here. feel, I feel like from a, a long-term investment standpoint, it makes more sense to go for cash flow. Yeah. Uh, for a couple of reasons, but the, probably the main reason being that it's steady and you can count on it. Appreciation yeah. here, you definitely historically can count on. Yes. Um, over the last hundred years, and specifically the last fifty, and really specifically the last five. <laughs> right? Yeah, really specifically. But, um, but you can, you really can't predict it the way that you can predict cash flow. Yeah. And so, um, from a long-term standpoint, that's a much better way to utilize your capital. Agreed. Um, now. Uh, you just talked about maybe being able to buy a, a property for 150000 and rent for $1,500. Yeah. Um, what if somebody were to uh, to want to do that, right, and they have this property here? Um, is it, you know, what's the process for, you know, selling one mm -hmm. um, in order to invest in the other? And do you have some insight on that? Yeah, so the 1031 exchange is a really important factor with that, which that is mean? a tax-deferred exchange so when you sell something you can defer those gains on that property into another property tax-free mm -hmm. so 1031 exchange 1031 is the number of the tax code and i'll give our guy you probably know ron ricard give him mm -hmm. a shout out he's a really good 1031 exchange guy and that is really the the process that i recommend doing it um or you know, if you want to find stuff out of state, me and you can introduce them to our network of brokers around right. the country and get them started on doing some research on different areas mm -hmm. and seeing what fits their needs the best. Right. Um, one example that Ron likes to give is this lady that had a house in Cupertino and she sold it for about $1.7 million and she was getting, you know, I think three or four grand a month in rent. And what she ended up doing was buying 16 or 17 homes in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in Vegas, she's getting a thousand, twelve hundred bucks a month in rent. Mm -hmm. So look at what that did to her cash flow. You go from right. three or four grand to twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. And now you can also sell one off at a time. Mm -hmm. If you, it's kind of like your own little cash register, right? You mm -hmm. can, if you need a hundred grand, you sell a house and you go do with it what you want and you can kind of sell them off, like your own little annuity kind of. So instead of paying the, the capital gains taxes all at once, at once on this huge number, you can sell one off and then pay exactly. a much smaller portion. That's actually very interesting. Yeah, so I love that example because it really shows you a couple of things. It shows you the difference in rents, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and difference in multiple income streams, and then also the tax advantages of that yeah. too. And also like you were talking earlier about diversification, right? So yeah. 
owning uh, multiple properties, um, it's going to spread out the risk as well because the, the likelihood of all exactly. of them going vacant at one time is much less. Whereas if you had that one single family right. home in Cupertino, if it's vacant, all of your income is gone for that, that exactly. short period of time. Yeah. Um, you know, another interesting thing, and it's not really multi-unit per se, but similarly, you know, out of state people can purchase commercial property, right? Mm -hmm. um, and many people don't realize this, but commercial property a lot of times is what's called a triple net lease, yeah. right? Wherein the actual tenant of the property pays for yeah. the Which property nice. taxes, <laughs> they pay for improvements on the property, they pay for insurance on the property, and yeah. many times they're, they're rented for 20 years on a, on a lease that's fixed for 20 years mm -hmm. or even graduates on an annual basis and backed by a multi-million or a billion dollar company, right? Yeah. Um, and the interesting thing is that for the same price that you could sell your property in Cupertino for, that yeah. you just mentioned, you could buy one where there's no landlord responsibility and, yep. and maybe gain eight or nine or ten thousand dollars a month yeah. just by going to the mailbox yeah exactly you get a check every month in the mail and that's always a nice thing too so yeah, that's so good there's definitely a lot of things that, yeah. that can be done um, in terms of you know selling a, a much lesser roi uh, property yeah. in order to gain larger incomes on the same amount yeah. of money and then, uh, you know, what we did touch on, that what you are giving up is the possibility of the wild appreciation that we've enjoyed here. Yeah, right. And, you are. And you can argue over the last 20 years, had you done that, you probably would have been, you probably would have been better off with that home in Cupertino. You might, you in know. In the long run. Yeah, in the long run. But yeah. it's definitely less predictable. And I don't think 20 years ago, anybody would have thought that I don't property think so. values would yeah. be this high. I don't right? think so, yeah. And, and yeah, so the other thing I wanted to mention too is that you mentioned it earlier that two to four units is still considered residential. So I wanted to make the clarification of the financing aspect. Yeah, of that's it. very important. Thank so you. So two to four, one to four units is considered residential financing, and then five units or more is considered commercial financing. So the difference is you're going to be putting, you're going to be required in commercial financing to put more money down, and you're probably going to pay a higher rate. So that's really the big difference um, in the, the mm -hmm. two. And so that's why well, one's I think that's, a, that's really important. So, yeah. and, and my understanding is also commercial loans for those bigger properties are going to either be adjustable or their fixed rates are going to be fixed for less amount. A little bit of, less time, yeah. 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 Um, Thank you. So yeah. kind of going back to the down payment side of things, though, you know, what is a good down payment on a rental property if you were, if you were to buy a four-unit property in Gilroy, like yeah, you mentioned at the beginning? Yeah, probably at least 30% or so more. So put 30% yeah, down? 30, So yeah. if they bought, you know, something for half a million dollars, they're going to have to put down 150000 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That, that, that's kind of like your entry into the game. Right. But again, if you mentioned, uh, as you mentioned before, if somebody's buying $150,000 homes out of state, you know, 30% of that is, is, you know, quite a bit less. Yes, right? it so is. We're talking it about $45,000, so that's you know, um, definitely a doable thing for, for many people. Yeah, it is. And uh, one other thing I wanted to mention too is um, a lot of people talk about off markets, the big bu buzzword, sure. you know, yeah. and, and really when it comes to multi, so with single family residential, I've heard from like our title rep that it's usually 10 to 15% of deals in single family are done off market, mm -hmm. meaning an off market meaning off MLS essentially is what I'm what I'm saying. You know what I'm talking Not about. Not advertised on the internet. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, with multi-unit, I would say it's considerably higher. I'd say it's more like 25 to 30 plus percent mm -hmm. of multi-unit or multi-unit deals are done off market because a couple of reasons. You have tenants; mm -hmm. they don't want to disturb the tenants. Um, it's more just based on numbers and not doing an open house with cookies baking in the oven and right. all this stuff. So it's really not as necessary. Those are two of the bigger reasons why. Sure. It's really more of a privacy thing for tenants. So it's really important with multi-unit that you know good brokers. You call Rusty or call, call myself to see what deals and opportunities there are because yeah. a lot of these deals are done off market. And furthermore, a big reason as to why is you have a lot of commercial brokers that do multi-unit. Mm -hmm. and they're definitely not big into the, using the MLS. Right. So we have to network with those guys in order to find these deals too. Mm -hmm. So it, yeah. those are the real, real big reasons. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so, thanks yeah. for that. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to bring up about multi-unit investing before we? No, I just would like to emphasize again, really in the Bay Area now, based on what a lot of people are buying these properties at price-wise, mm -hmm. it's really not for the percentage of the return. It's really 
you're going to get some return, but it's really for the appreciation and, and, and getting some cash flow. But if you're really interested in cash flow, we got to talk other strategies yeah. elsewhere. So that's really, I want to emphasize that it's important. Yeah, no, I would definitely agree with that. Thanks for yeah. that. And, um, you know, before we, before we end here, I'd like to also talk to you a little bit about your podcast that you're yeah. doing. So. Yeah, I do a podcast. It's called Miked, which is Mike D is my, is my name. So uh, we're getting all, all situated on iTunes. So you can look us up. You can even go to my website, MikeDsells.com in the podcast section. Um, we got about eight or 10 episodes so far. Awesome. And uh, we're just getting it going. And, and yeah. it's really, it's a 10 to 12 minute uh, podcast. I get to the point, I do stats, I do a tip of the week. And then I give stories and different deal stories and stuff. And you're in, you're out, you get your info and that's yeah. it. So it's very cool. I mean, it's very similar to what we're doing here. It sounds yeah. like, but it's yeah. a little bit more bite sized and can be listened to yeah. in the car or, or as people are out and about, you know, working exactly. out maybe. Yeah, exactly. A Hopefully, yeah. On, the, on real <laughs> we'll pump, estate. We'll pump you up with real estate. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Well, that's about all the time that we have for today. I want to thank you again, Mike, yeah. for being here. Thanks for really having me awesome. on. Absolutely. Yeah. Appreciate it. So we'll see you again next week.